Okay, so in this example, we have a diagram which shows a toy for children which is hung on the ceiling using a string. The rod has negligible mass and remains horizontal. Calculate the mass of the elephant. Okay, so the rabbit and the duck are going to pull down on the rod. So is the elephant. So the force is going to be like these. Okay, I need to choose where to take moments about. I know this. I know we can apply the principle of moments because the rod remains horizontal. I'm going to take moments about this point here, about the thread. The reason is because I know there's going to be a force through the thread, but if I I, mean, I don't care about it and I want to calculate it, if I take moments about the thread, I can ignore that force. So I'm going to take moments about the thread. Sum of clockwise moments will equal some anti-clockwise moment. So what's going to create a clockwise moment if you're at the thread? Well, that's the elephant. And let's call that elephant, uh, well, we want the mass, but let's get the weight first. So it'll be the weight, which is the mass times the gravitational field strength times the distance which is in centimeters 0 point in meters 0 0.17 meters okay that's the only clockwise moment these two create an anti-clockwise moment so the sum of anti-clockwise moment will be so let's start with a the duck there 0 0.046 times 0 0.1 meters and add on the moment from the rabbit 0 0.060 times 0 0.15 and that's a total of 0 0.0136 newton meters okay so the clockwise moment must equal the anti-clockwise moment so 0 0.17 mg equals 0 0.0136 and if i solve for m i get um, 0 0.0082 kilograms which is just another way of saying 8.2 grams okay calculate the tension on the string okay so there's going to be force on the string there and there has to be force and if we look at all the other arrows here they're all downwards okay so all of these are downwards so there must be an upward force on the string so that the result of force equals zero okay so this is the translation equilibrium part and the upward force must balance the downward forces so we can write an equation for this as well. So 0 0.06 plus 0 0.046 plus the the weight of the of the elephant, which is just 0 0.8, 0 0.08, must equal the upward force. Let's call that tension there. And if we figure that out, the tension must equal 0 0.186. Otherwise, the rod won't be in equilibrium and translational equilibrium. So we've got another typical example of a moments question. However, in this case, I'm not interested in F first. I'm going to calculate that second. I'm more interested in the force on the bar from the pivot. So I'm interested in this point here. So I know that a force has to be upwards because all the other forces are downwards. So for this bar to remain at rest or in equilibrium, this force has to be upwards. Of course, let's call that R. Okay, so I need to figure that R out. And to do that, I well, I don't know F. And so that means it's going to make it trickier. So I need to choose a sensible point to take moments about. Okay, so in this case, because I don't know F and I don't care about F at this point in time, I, by taking moments about where the force F is applied, I can ignore the force F. So I'm going to take moments about where the force F is applied. Okay, so again, some are clockwise moments because some are anti-clockwise moment. So what is going to create a clockwise moment from F? Well, it's going to be the normal reaction force here. Or that's going to spin it clockwise. These two are spinning it anti-clockwise. So the clockwise moment will be the distance from where F is applied to where R is applied. So that's going to be 3 times R. Okay. And now then for this uh, anti-clockwise moments, so that's going to be the distance from F to the 1 Newton force first. So that's going to be 1 times well, the 3 plus the uh, 2. So that gives me a distance of 5 meters first. And then the 2 Newton force times the distance from where we're taking moments about F all the way to the other end here. That's 8 meters, 3 plus 5, 8 meters. So that gives me a total of 21 Newton meters. They must be equal, so that's clockwise and anticlockwise. So 3R will equal 21. So that gives me R equals 7 Newtons. Okay, so now I need to figure out F for the second question here. Now it's quite straight, straightforward. I know that for translational equilibrium, the resultant force must equal zero. 
So all the upward forces must equal the downward forces. So 2 plus 1 plus F must equal R. And we know R is 7. So therefore, F is going to equal 7 minus 3, which gives me 4 newtons. Now, I could have done this question by taking moments about the pivot first, and I would have gotten the exact same answers.